Welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry, and today I have come up with six moves that I believe are realistic and would make the Pittsburgh Steelers better for the 2024 season. Six moves that could be realistically done by Steelers GM Omar Khan before the start of camp to increase this team's chances of a Super Bowl next season. Before we get into it, get us started right now by grading Omar Khan's performance this offseason to this point. Given everything that we know with the Deontay Johnson trade and the draft and everything that's gone down, Russell Wilson coming in here, what would you grade the Pittsburgh Steelers offseason a, B, C, D, or F. You guys know how I feel. I believe that this is an A-. Uh, I think that the only thing that you could have probably done better is maybe not trade Deontay Johnson, or if you did, at least have a plan in place to replace him as the Steelers' wide receiver two moving forward. Uh, that's certainly what I would do there. I'd give it an A-, minus. but let me know what you guys think down there in the comments. Now, a little disclaimer here before we get into the, this segment here. I am not predicting that all six of these moves are going to happen, okay? I'm just saying that these are six moves that I could see happen uh, over the next couple weeks or so as we prepare for Steelers training camp. So if all six of these things don't happen, don't come at me in the comment section saying I was wrong, okay? Now let's get into my list here. And the first one is probably the least realistic, all right? So we're going to get the least realistic out of the way here, but it's not impossible that the Steelers end up making a trade for a wide receiver. Okay, whether that is somebody like a Brandon Ayuk, whether that be somebody like a Tyler Lockett, whether that be somebody like a Traylon Burks, okay, that's something that, you know, I definitely think uh, could happen. I think that these are probably the most likely candidates. Brandon Ayuk, if he demands a trade, Tyler Lockett, if Seattle wants to get James Daniels and help out their offensive line, then Traylon Burks, who has been completely put down the totem pole there with the Tennessee Titans. I could see any one of these guys uh, potentially getting traded to the Steelers. And listen, man, I do think it's unlikely. At this point in the NFL offseason, you have to know that trades, especially for big-name receivers, usually don't go down at this point in the year. They usually go down before the draft. That's why we talked about wide receiver trade options so much before the draft ended up happening. And if they do happen after the draft, it's usually post-June 1st, and you know, it, nothing really surfaced at that time of the year either. So now that we approach training camp, I do think it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. The way that you get a deal done here, if you are the Pittsburgh Steelers, is that the Pittsburgh Steelers have to offer something that the team that they're trading with can benefit from right now. You can't just offer them 2025 draft capital because they're gonna have to wait an entire season to be able to cash that in in the 2025 NFL draft. So that's not something that's going to work. If you're the Steelers, you have to have a starting capable player that you're willing to offload to another team in order to get a guy like Brandon Ayuk or Tyler Lockett. And for me, guys, the, the key would be James Daniels because you look at the, the two teams for the bigger name receivers that we talked about earlier, Brandon Ayuk and Tyler Lockett. Okay, those two guys, what do the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers need? And what could make them better? An improved interior offensive line. The Steelers have a lot of depth at uh, uh, interior offensive line right now. James Daniels is on the final year of his contract. You just drafted Mason McCormick, who the team really likes, and I thought could be a day one starter at guard in the NFL. I still believe that. So listen, man, if this was the deal, and the Steelers ended up getting Brandon Ayuk, and the 49ers ended up agreeing to this. This is something that I would be, you know, pretty happy with if Omar Khan was able to pull this off. A second rounder in 2025 and a 2026 third rounder plus James Daniels, and then you get Brandon Ayuk in return, and as well as Aaron Banks, who is kind of a uh, replacement level starting type. He could compete with Mason McCormick for the starting right guard spot in Steelers training camp. And then the other one that I could see happening for Tyler Lockett is that this would actually cost less. You know, Tyler's a lot older than Brandon Ayuk, uh, so I just feel like that it would cost a lot less to get a guy like this than it would be for Ayuk's caliber there, who's an all-pro. So I think it would be Tyler Lockett and Anthony Bradford, who is kind of a younger, kind of up-and-coming interior offensive lineman for James Daniels, and then a 2025 fifth-round pick. That's what I would do, and that's what I would accept if I were Steelers GM Omar Khan. But if you had the option between these two trade offers, would you pay more for Brandon Ayuk, or would you pay less to go out and get Tyler Lockett? Type Ayuk or lock it for me down there in the comments section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's gonna throw you an ad, uh, it's gonna throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. Now, if Omar Khan is not able to trade for a receiver, he could sign 
a wide receiver and NFL free agency. And there's a bunch of different ways that this could happen. Okay, like they could wait all the way past uh, training camp and get somebody that another team cuts. They could do a bunch of different things here. I think probably the most likely candidates for the Pittsburgh Steelers when it comes to free agency targets is probably Michael Thomas, who is still available right now. I think that his size would provide a nice little uh, you know, addition to this room here because you got so many smaller, shiftier receivers that I think a bigger guy could really help out this team. And then same thing goes for Juju Smith-Schuster, who's likely going to get cut by the New England Patriots this year. Uh, he's Mike Tomlin's guy. He likes him a lot. I know that he would like to come back to Pittsburgh. So I, I think that those two are probably the most likely free agency options for the Steelers if they don't trade for a receiver. Now, what the Pittsburgh Steelers might do here is that they might just keep the guys that they have in-house right now and let things play out during training camp, right? Because you got George Pickens as your number one guy right now. You expect Roman Wilson to eventually rise up the ranks and be your number two guy. And then you have, you know, Calvin Austin III, Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, and Scotty Miller all trying to, you know, vie for positioning there as at the wide receiver three spot. But another thing to keep in mind here, guys, is that Pat Firemuth is a legit weapon in his own right. He, you can probably just break it down in the way that like George Pickens is number one, Pat Firemuth is number two, then Calvin Austin the third or somebody else rises up to number three, and then Roman Wilson starts the year at number four and then eventually works his way up. I think that's a pretty decent room right there if the Steelers want to stand Pat. And honestly, if they went into the year with the way that the things are currently constructed, I wouldn't be too upset about it. Now share your take down there in the comments section. Do the Steelers need to add another wide receiver this offseason? Uh, I personally don't think they need to. It would be nice if they did. Like if they got Brandon Ayuk, that certainly helps their chances out. But I hardly think they need to go out and get a receiver. But let me know down there in the comments section what you guys have to say. A trade that they could do here is that they could trade away Dan Moore Jr. And if I'd have to guess, I would have to say that trading Dan Moore Jr. is probably the more most likely move on this list. Most likely, okay? Because Mark Caboli said uh, earlier this week, that Broderick Jones is your starting left tackle. Dan Moore Jr. and Troy Fautano, the first-round rookie, will battle for the right tackle spot in camp, and whoever loses that battle will be the swing tackle. But that kind of contradicts what Dan Moore Jr. had to say about playing right tackle earlier this offseason program. He said, based off of the amount of starts I have uh, on the left side, I would like to view myself as a left tackle in this league. Not everyone can play both sides. The people that can are really blessed and really athletic people. So this kind of stinks like the Kevin Dotson situation last year where Dotson didn't want to be a backup. Uh, he wouldn't come out straight up and say, I want to be traded. Uh, but, you know, the Mike Tomlin's philosophy is we want volunteers, not hostages. And if Dan Moore Jr. is being forced to play on the right side where he's not comfortable, he might turn into more of a hostage than a volunteer, which might lead to a trade. Now, remember, last year when they traded away Kevin Dotson, they got a pretty decent haul for him. A couple of pick swaps from the Los Angeles Rams, and they could do the same thing this year. The Washington Commanders are a team that are desperate for a young, up-and-coming offensive tackle. Dan Moore Jr. has a lot of experience as a young, kind of athletic uh, offensive tackle. They need a left tackle there in Washington, so just do the same thing here. The same exact deal that you had with the Los Angeles Rams last year I think would be an excellent deal for Omar Khan and the Pittsburgh Steelers this season. And if they ended up making that deal, I would be pretty happy with it. Then a couple of extension candidates here, some realistic extension candidates. I think Pat Fryermuth is probably the most likely Steeler to get an extension before the, the start of the season. I think that Muth has just been absolutely unbelievable in OTAs, his connection with Russell Wilson. I mean, you can just see it from the first time you lay eyes on it. Uh, you know, they're th he's throwing to Muth with anticipation. These guys really seem to have that chemistry down pat. And I, I don't think the Steelers want to see Pat Fryermuth hit the open market because he is just that talented. If he has co that complete breakout season like I'm expecting him to have this year, uh, his price is only going to go up from there. So if you feel good about him with what you've seen so far in camp, lock him up, get him uh, uh, on, a, on a big contract here and keep him in Pittsburgh for a long time. Then we get to extend Cam Hayward. And, you know, honestly, guys, I would probably rather wait out the season when it comes to the Cam Hayward situation. But because the Steelers, because he's the heart and soul of the Steelers locker room, it wouldn't shock me in the slightest if they end up extending Cam for another two seasons and for them to come to some sort of agreement. Now, where I'm at with this situation is that, you know, I certainly think that this team could get that deal done, but I would personally let things play out this year because there's a lot of different things that could happen 
where you would regret paying Cam Hayward this offseason if they transpired during the 2024 campaign. Like, for example, what if Keanu Benson becomes a superstar defensive tackle? You listen to guys like Daniel Jeremiah, all the people that have been at Steelers OTAs. Everybody talks about this guy like he is going to be a budding superstar this year. If that happens and he's on a rookie contract and he can play Cam Award's role, why pay Cam top five defensive tackle money when he's aging when you already have a guy in Keanu Benson who can fill that role at a younger age and on a lower contract mark? And then also, what if Cam gets hurt again? I mean, we know that he got hurt that groin last year, and if it happens again and you're slated to pay him for two more seasons at top dollar, I mean, that's going to really hurt this team's ability to build a winning football team. And then what if Cam just falls off a cliff, right? When he came back from that groin injury last year, he wasn't really the same player. Now, he was playing hurt, all right? So maybe now that he's gotten that surgically repaired, he's going to be back to the same Cam Hayward that we all know, the all-pro uh, a candidate year in and year out. Maybe we see that Cam this year, but also like after that groin surgery, maybe he's not that Cam Hayward anymore. If that happens, you would absolutely regret paying Cam Hayward a uh, top dollar at the defensive tackle position. Uh, so let me know down there in the comments section, which guy are you extending, Pat Fryermuth or Cam Hayward? Let me know down there in the comments section, type PF for Pat Fryermuth or CH for Cam Hayward. Let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comments. Now, the final move that I could see the Steelers uh, making, and I really hope they make this move, guys, is I really want them to bring back Marcus Golden. Now, if you remember, last year, Golden was kind of a later-in-the-offseason type move, and he was really good for this team last year, man. And you take a look at the outside linebacker room for this team right now. You've got T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith as you're locked in, starting outside linebackers. Nick Herbig, who's had a really good offseason, is locked in as your number three. And you got a bunch of guys that I don't really trust behind those three guys. But what happens if T.J. Watt or Alex Highsmith or even Nick Herbig gets hurt? Who's going to be your fourth guy and kind of that – first line of defense in case of injury. And for me, guys, I think that should be Marcus Golden. Last year, he had the highest pro football focus grade of his career at an 86.5. He stepped in for TJ Watt when he got hurt, and he was just fine. He was, he was actually pretty darn good for a backup outside linebacker to fill that role. He was really good in run defense. And I think if Alex Highsmith or TJ Watt goes down, I want Marcus Golden in the lineup for me. Now, you be the GM down there in the comments section. You guys have seen my five realistic moves for Omar Khan to consider here on today's show, but now it's your turn. What is one move that you would make right now if you had the GM pen right now? Let me know what you guys would do for the Steelers down there in the comments. Now, make sure you guys type real one down there in the comments section if you haven't already because you made it to the end of today's show and only the real ones make it to the end. It's a longer video, guys, you know, and a lot of people click away, but not you. You are a real one, so identify yourself for me down there in the comments section. I greatly appreciate all my real ones that make it to the end of the show. Make sure you click that subscribe button as well because if you're a real one and you made it to the end of the show, all the real ones know that the real ones should be subscribed to the channel. So make sure you get that done right now. Help us grow our channel by clicking that subscribe button for me right now.